I come here to say thank you to all that each one of you do. When I was growing up in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery, outside of a little town called Troy, and I would see those signs that said, white waiting, colored waiting, white men, colored men, white women, colored women. I would ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, why? And they would say, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way, don't get in trouble. But I was inspired to get in the way to get in trouble. <laughs> Here, this unbelievable organization and all of the volunteers, you've been getting in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. And it's my understanding that some of you will be coming up to the hill tomorrow to talk, and you should get in a little trouble, really. I come to the conclusion that we shouldn't spend more money to build more bombs and guns and missiles, that we need to use our limited resources to take care of basic human needs here at home and around the world. And that's what you have been doing. Thank you. I want to take just a brief moment to thank your outgoing CEO and President Dr. Lean Gale. We as a community of citizens have been grateful and thankful for your brilliant and good work. You have helped protect the world from danger and disease and use your talent to defend women and children from the violence that threaten them. Your expertise, not only as a physician, but as a public servant, has touched millions who have slept easier, live longer, and avoided the harsh consequences of disease and death because you have been there. So we thank you. I want to also take a moment to welcome the incoming president and CEO, Michelle Nunn. I knew CARE was a smart organization, but I'm convinced now more than ever, CARE, like under Helene Gale, under Michelle Nunn, will be a highlight, a headlight, and not a taillight. I said to you tonight that you must never give up. You must never give in. You must keep the faith and keep your eyes on the prize. Carry the message. Stand up. Speak up. Speak out. That's what you've been doing. Continue to do it. And find a way to get in the way. There are too many people all over our world on this little planet, on this little spaceship that we call Earth depending on you for food, shelter, education for their minds. As Dr. King said on one occasion, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or we will perish as fools. If we can get it right just in some place maybe it would serve as a model for the rest of humanity. We can do it. I know we can do it. My first trip to Washington, D.C. was in 1961. 21 years old, had all of my hair, <laughs> a few pounds lighter. The same year that President Barack Obama was born, they go on something called a freedom ride. And they said, we couldn't do it. We couldn't bring down those signs, but we brought them down. You know, only places our children and their children will see the signs in America today will be in a book, in a museum, on a video, 
So when someone tells me that change is impossible, that you cannot bring about change, I said, come and walk in my shoes. They told us that we wouldn't win the right to vote by using the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. But we did. We had a president by the name of Linda Bain Johnson come to the Congress and introduce the Voting Rights Act and close that unbelievable speech with the words of the anthem of the Civil Rights Movement when you said, and we shall overcome. We shall overcome with care, we will overcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>